guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, my name is Varen. I'm the education director here for BDAA, and we're going to get started this week on intro to data visualization in Python. So just an overview, we're going to go over, you know, revisit the workflow, see where data visualization fits into everything, then talk about what exploratory data analysis is, you know, why we do it, and then get into the packages and eventually coding uh, with the data set we have today. So last week, you know, we, we've been talking about cleaning data. So now we're focusing here on the workflow where, where it's visual, visualizing data. So, you know, we want to explore our data to see what kind of trends we have, you know, trying to find relationships between our data. This is where you'll see a lot of uh, plotting being done. So um, that's, that's where we are in the workflow. And, you know, the overall importance is because we want to do exploratory data analysis, you know, and, you know, what is EDA? And it's basically the process of just familiar, familiar, familiarizing yourself with data by looking for patterns and trends. So this is where data visualizations come in. I'm sure you guys have seen you know, COVID-19 dashboards. Like, you know, what is that? That's, that's the, the data that we've cleaned and we've now uh, done some sort of analysis and you know, made visualizations for that. So it's a way to communicate our findings and understand our data. So, you know, we, we want to also, you know, look for anomalies in our data, you know, a lot of different plots can help us visualize the distribution, the frequency of counts, you know, outliers, and, you know, you know, uh, we also want to be able to communicate our findings, and uh, this right here, uh, this link will take you to r slash data is beautiful, it's, it's a subreddit where it has all these very beautiful data visualizations, and, you know, this is one of them, and, and th this is what we want to do with data visualization, we want to be able to communicate uh, these results and be able to take the raw data that we have and uh, make it meaningful. So uh, the package that we'll, we'll be using are matplotlib mainly, but I'm also going to be showing how to uh, do the sim similar plots with pandas. So um, I'm going to be showing two different methods and you know feel free to choose which one you want, but I want to give you both of those options here. So you know, with that, uh, I have the links posted there for the data set and the notebook that we're going to be working with. So if you click on the link here, it's going to take you to Kaggle. And you will want to come here and download uh, the data set here. It's the uh, Rio de Janeiro uh, Olympics 2016 Summer Olympics. So go ahead and download that and save it. And then here is the Colab notebook, which we'll be working in. So um, you're going to click on that second link there in the chat, which is the collab notebook, and uh, you'll want to uh, make a copy, so a file and save a copy and drive. Um, so you'll have your own to work with. So I'll go ahead and take a few moments to do that and um, just give a thumbs up or let me know in the chat. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll resend the links. I thought I would have to do that. So the first one is the data set and the second one is the notebook. I'm assuming you guys have uh, made a copy. So if not, if you didn't just file, save a copy and drive. Um, and so now we're going to get into the coding. So what we're going to do first is we're going to install the packages that we want. So um, the way we install matplotlib is that we're going to be actually using the interface called pyplot, which allows us to communicate with the matplotlib package. And we're going to um, get that pyplot package by uh, treating the matplotlib object as the, the property we want to index into. So we're going to do import matplotlib.pyplot. And that alias we're going to use to refer uh, to all those plots or the object is going to be plt. This is you know, the standard that most people use. So we're going to Im import uh, matplotlib here. So do import matplotlib.pyplot. So even here, it's auto complete auto completes it for you. Um, and then we're going to install pandas. So import pandas as pd, right? So now let's run this. And so now uh, we're going to uh, load that data set into Google Colab. So if you remember, the way we do this is that this code chunk here, if you run this, it's going to ask you to choose files from your file system. So you go here. I'm going to get mine. I have it listed here, summer2016.csv. And it's just going to show the progress bar. And now if you refresh this, um, you'll see if you refresh this button, the summer2016.csv will pop up here. 
So um, once you guys have done that, now we're going to read in our data set and do some you know, basic properties that we want to look at. So I'm just going to save my data object to DF for later, and I'm going to do pd.read CSV. And then if you remember, the way we get our file path as a string is that we go up here to the data set. Yeah, um, it, it actually shows in the notebook where um, you, you have all these steps here. So uh, what I just did was I just installed matplotlib. I did import matplotlib and imported pandas. So um, yeah, so you just want to uh, import those two packages. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to read in the CSV. So to get the file path here, uh, the data, if you've read it in, is going to be right here. So you want to click on right click on these three dots here. And we're going to copy path. Right. And then we want to specify the file path as a string. So we're just going to, you know, I'm just going to do control V here and paste it in there. Um, so now once you read that, you've brought the data frame in. And so now um, I'm just going to check the head of the data just to see, you know, the first few observations. And we did this last week. Um, we see here, this. these are just some of the column names, um, the various variables. Uh, we can also look at the shape of the data uh, to see how many samples we're working with. So uh, we see here we have around 2,000 samples and 16 different columns. So. Okay, so now we can get into the actual visualization part. So like I said, I'm gonna be showing how to plot various different graphs in pandas and matplotlib. Ultimately, the results will, you know, you'll see we have the same graph either way, but uh, you have a choice based on uh, which one you wanna use from here on out. So um, first thing I always like to do is, you know, one of the things we like to visualize when we explore our data is visualize distributions, right? So uh, whenever you have any sort of numeric columns, um, you want to uh, look at the visualization to see, you know, what kind of, uh, look at the distribution to see what kind of values that a numerical column can take up. And we can do this with the two main plots. We can do this with a histogram and we can do this in a box plot, right? So this will show us our overall distribution for numeric columns. And to do this with matplotlib, right, uh, we're gonna be using that PLT object whenever we uh, do any sort of plotting. So uh, one of the first things I like to do is I like to set a figure size. So these are kind of best practices you want to do before you plot uh, graphs is you want to call this plt.figure and specify the figure size. So what this will do is you'll make your uh, graph uh, look bigger and you can specify it with your uh, tuple here. So this parentheses are your tuple of a width and height. So you'll see that I'm going to specify an integer for my width and an integer for my height. And that will be the figure that my graph will be when I plot it. And then another thing that is important is to always label your, your X and Y in titles, right? So to plot your X, to set your X label, your Y label, and your titles, you just do plt.x label, specify your label as a string, plt.y label, specify the string, and uh, then you want to show the plot with plt.show. So uh, you'll see how we code this now. And so when you plot a histogram in matplotlib, you call the plt.hist function, right? And the way we want to uh, grab the column that we want to plot is if you remember, uh, we index into the column or we index into the data frame with the specific column name. So, right, the data frame and we treat it as an array and we specify the specific column with the a string, string name of the column. So uh, let me just, you know, plot the, uh, data frame itself so we can see the column names. But now it says use matplotlib to plot a histogram of the distribution of heights in color to red and label the axis to set the figure size. So another thing you can do is you can specify other arguments here. So you can specify the color, which we're going to be doing a lot. And you can also specify the bins, which I'll get to in a minute. So let's go ahead and let's plot the distribution of heights. So let's first set our figure size. So plt.figure and then fig size, um, right, uh, Philip, in that case, what you want to do is you want to double check that you've imported pandas and that you've imported the, uh, the pandas library. And um, it says here, what you want to do is you want to right click this, uh, copy it, and then do the pd.read underscore CSV function. Um, 
that's that's the function that we just ran. So um, over here, we're gonna specify the figure size. So I'm gonna do, you know, 15 and eight. That's what I always like to do. Some very variation of that. And I'm going to now plot the histogram. So uh, let's do plt.hist and let's do df and grab that heights column, right? And uh, we're going to set the color to red. So specify the color as a string. And the, um, right, that's it. So once we plot that, now we want to set the X label. So I'm just gonna call it observations. We're going to set the Y label. So I'm gonna call that frequency and set the title. So I'll just do distribution of heights. And now we're gonna show the plot. Show, so now when we run this, we're gonna see that we're gonna get our distribution of heights. So um, again, this just shows the overall, uh, what kind of outcomes and what kind of frequency they have. So what values show up here. So we can see, um, uh, you know, a lot of our data falls between 170, uh, 170 and 180. So like for our heights. Um, and so that's, that's an important thing we wanna look at. And we can see it's you know, approximately normally distributed. Right? That's what height usually is, it's approximately normal. So um, we can do another one here. We can plot the distribution of the age and set the color to orange and label the axis and set the figure size. But here I'm gonna show you what the bin width argument does. So when we specify the bin width, what we're trying to do is the bins in, in a histogram is uh, we're going to, yeah, um, this is how we read in the data here. Um, df, that's the object you created, and then you do pd read underscore csv, and you get the file path here. Um, and if you run this, you'll have to import the data in. So um, what this, what the bins of the histogram are is uh, basically you're setting intervals, which uh, a lot of the various observations fall into. So basically with large data sets, right, you're gonna have a lot of different values. So you want a lot of bins so you can have the data fit into each of those intervals. So, you know, uh, you, we have by default, if you don't specify bins, it's gonna have 10 bins. So, you know, we have each of these intervals, you know, all the observations from 100 to 150, they fall in that bin. So you can tweak that as you'll see here. So first thing we're gonna set the figure size. So do fig size equals, um, I'm just gonna do 15 and eight as always, but you can do whatever. And then we're going to plot the histogram of the age. So grab the age column and make the color orange. And we're going to set the bins to 30, right? So you'll see how this looks. And then similarly, you want to set your X labels. So observations. And then the frequency and the title. Distribution of age. And then plt.show will show that plot to us. So now you can see here that uh, we've created now more bins. So you can see how our data looks a lot different here. We can see the various different um, various different spikes in our data. And that's what ha usually happens with bins. The more bins you create, the more you know you see more coming from your data here. So you know, if I made this 50 bins, for example, right? we see more gaps in our data. So usually you want to find a happy medium and that's usually anywhere from five to 20. So um, if I just do 10 here, um, 10, uh, you see that this is a, a, you know, a nice shape we can work with. And usually anywhere from five to 20 bins, depending on the size of your data is good. But that's how you do it in matplotlib. And now we're going to talk about how we can plot histograms in pandas. And the way we plot stuff in pandas is that we want to grab that column name specifically and call the plot function on it, right? So what we will do is we'll grab that numerical column name, we'll index it, we'll call dot plot, and then the arguments you want to specify here are similar to what we just did before. You want to specify the kind, so the kind means the kind of graph you're going to you're going to plot. So here in this case it's a histogram, 
the figure size that we specify and the color. So very similar, except you can do it in one line of code. So uh, here we're going to plot a histogram, a di distribution of the weight, colored blue, and set the various uh, labels. So let's do uh, df uh, weight and then dot plot. And we're going to get the, we're going to make it a histogram, right? So set the kind parameter to hist, uh, color it blue, and we're going to set the figure size, so the arguments fig size, to 15 and 8. And then let's plot our x label, observations, our y label as the frequency and title distribution weight. And then we want to show the plot. So you see here, you know, we got the same result, right? We plotted the plotted that histogram, and all we did was, you know, similar. We just grabbed that column, except we called the dot plot function. So this is how you do it in pandas. Um, and so, you know, just to show you, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to label everything here, but just to show you that the results are the same as what we did before. Let's replot the height using the pandas method and let's color it red and let's set the figure size to 15 and eight. So we just plotted the height distribution earlier. Uh, oh shoot, I didn't specify the kind, oops, I'll do it. So specify that, that kind parameter is hist. And now you can see here, we got the same result as we did up here. So again, pandas versus matplotlib, it really doesn't matter. Uh, just different arguments and different way of doing it. So that's how we look at uh, the distribution via the histogram. But, you know, let's say that we want to look at the various summary statistics, right? You know, we want to look at how the median looks, the minimum, the maximum. Uh, a box box plot, or also known as box and whisker plot, is a good way of also visualizing your data because it can highlight various outliers in your data set that you may not uh, be able to pick up from just a histogram. So the way we do this is similar. You're going to see this theme pretty much through this entire exercise when we plot graphs. Uh, you call the you take the PLT object and call dot whatever graph, and then you specify the column name and extra parameters. So here you do PLT dot box plot. Call uh, specify the column name that you want, and uh, you know set the other variables or other uh, labels and stuff like that. So let's plot a box plot of the distribution of heights, and then set the axis title and figure sizes. So again, let's set the figure size. So figure uh, fig size fifteen and eight. Let's plot the distribution of the what I said of the heights. Height and um, now let's set the axis title. So plt.title um, or plot the x axis. So uh, x label uh, height and plot the y label, which is the spread. And let's do plt is distribution. Right. And then let's do plt.show. So if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, okay, yeah, so there we go. So here we see that, you know, our height, the nice thing about box and whisker plots here is that these extra dots you see on the outside here, that shows our outliers in our data. So this plot uh, does a good job of helping you diagnose which columns you may have to you know, stand, uh, scale and center to get rid of any sort of outliers here because outliers can mislead and um, make your visualization seem a little off. So uh, that's, the, that's the benefit of doing uh, a box and whisker plot. So let's do another one here. Let's do uh, one for ages. So again, set the figure size of 15 and eight, um, plt.boxplot. Uh, let's do the age, right? So age and um, 
let's set the titles again. So plt.x label. We'll do age plt.y label spread and the title distribution age and then we will show the plot uh, oh whoops i spelled this wrong so here you can see that uh, this plot here shows for our age we have a lot of um you know a lot of skewed we have a lot of extra outliers here on the end so uh, that's something we could diagnose and look forward to look for um, to fix in our data. So that's how you do it with matplotlib and that's how you uh, plot box plot that's that way. But we can also do it in pandas similarly. So um, we will use the same thing, the grab that column name, do the plot function and specify in, instead of hist this time for the kind argument, uh, we're just gonna do box as a string. So that will indicate that we're gonna, we're gonna do a box plot. So the way we plot a box plot here in pandas is Again, let's do it for the weight. So let's do df.weight uh, plot, and we're going to do kind is box and set the fig size, the figure size to, um, let's do 1512 this time. Um, and then set our title distribution. Uh, weight and by default in pandas actually when you plot a box plot the x is already labeled for you i believe so uh, all we can do is just plot the y label here and if we do spread uh, we can show this so right so that's one of the main differences here there's some minor differences between how plotting works in each uh, you know in this in, in uh, pandas you don't have to really specify the x label uh, it's already specified for you based on the column you pick because we selected that column, right? So here we can see the distribution of the weight um, and we can do the box plots in pandas and uh, matplotlib uh, similarly here. So uh, that's that's how we visualize distributions in Python with either matplotlib or pandas. You want to either plot, uh, plot a histogram or a box plot to uh, visualize those numerical columns. But another thing that we want to look at is we want to visualize categorical counts and, and um, take uh, take advantage of those um, discrete variables we might have we we might have right we want to be able to uh, plot bar charts for example because that can show the relative frequency and counts of various variable variables so the way we do that is with you know a bar graph and the way we do this in matplotlib is we call the plt.bar function. So what the dot bar function does is it uh, plots the bar graph of the various column name that you uh, specify. But here, the way we plot it is a uh, little important. So we're going to specify the x and y of what we're going to plot. And for the x, we're going to grab the column name that we want, but call the dot unique function. Because uh, I'll get to that, I'll show you what that does. And then this category, the dot value underscore counts function uh, returns the various, uh, the frequency of the observations in each of those columns. So that's one of the functions that I showed you the first Python workshop, this value underscore counts. It's useful for us when we want to plot a bar chart. And then again, you have other uh, um, arguments as well. For the color, most of the times you're plotting multiple different discrete, uh, you know, multiple different outcomes against each other. So you want to specify multiple color names so you can um, differentiate between each of those columns. So I'll show you what this unique function does. So if you do, uh, we let's try it on the gender here and we call it dot unique. The reason why we specify the this in the in the x direction is because. Um, it shows those two labels that we want. So what this is going to do is it's going to plot the male and female labels on our longer x-axis. And then I'm sure you guys remember the value underscore counts function. That's going to return the various frequency of um, the frequency of the each. So here the 1047, 967. That's why we put that in the y because that's what we want to plot. 
So let me show you this here. So let's let's plot the bar chart of the different counts of genders and then set the axis titles and figure size. So let's do this, that, that here. So plt.figure and do fig size and let's do 15 and 12 or at least 10. Um, and then let's do the bar chart of the uh, the various different genders. So we're going to grab that uh, column, which is called sex. That's where the genders are. So df set uh, df dot sex, and then let's do the dot unique, right? Because we want those unique uh, male and female labels. And then that's for our x. And now we're going to specify our y, which is the height of the bar. So that's going to be the value of the counts of the sex column. So we're going to do we're going to grab that and then we're going to call dot value underscore counts. So dot value underscore counts. And now uh, we will also specify the colors because we want each of these to be their own bar. And since we have male and female, we're going to just specify two different colors. So we're going to do color and we're going to specify that as an, as an array. So let's just do red. I think I said red and green here. So red and green. So again, the X, the Y, and then the colors that you want to label them. And then it's the title, right? Uh, free count of genders and plt .x label. So gender and plt.y. And let's do that. And now let's just show the plot. So now here we can see that um, you know, this shows us uh, what proportion of the athletes in the Summer Olympics 2016 were male versus female. So we can see that there were definitely more male competitors here than female. And that's good to know. Um, we can do this for, let's look at the various gold, the various type of medals, um, you know, the gold, bronze or silver, which ones were won the most. Um, out of all the other all the other events, so same thing. Uh, let's set the figure size. So plt dot figure big size fifteen ten, and now let's plot the bar chart with the various metals, right? So plt dot uh, bar, and then we're gonna grab the metal column, right? And then we want the unique labels. And now we want to plot the counts of the metals. So df metal dot value underscore counts, right? And so now uh, we want to we want to specify more than two colors this time, right? Because we have uh, gold, bronze, and silver. So uh, you know we're going to specify three different uh, colors in our array. So let's do you know uh, yellow, uh, purple. And blue, you know, let's just try that. Um, and then let's set our X label to metals, our Y label to count, and let's set the title to just uh, count of metals. And then let's show the plot here. Oh, oops, color. So now you can see here that um, obviously you want to pick uh, good colors, but um, you can see here that most of the the count, the most of the medals that were won in the Olympics were bronze medals, right? We didn't have very, you know, it was close between silver and gold, but uh, usually most of the uh, people who finished were and brought were bronze medalists. So that's um, one way you can. Uh, do the bar graphs in matplotlib, but we can also do the similar these similar graphs and replicate them in pandas as well. And the way we do this is same thing. We uh, we want to call that dot plot function, but when we grab the column name this time, we're not going to directly call the plot function on that column name. We're going to first do dot value underscore counts because what that's going to do is, if you remember, that function returns the various frequencies of the different columns of the column name itself. So when we call dot value dot counts and then call dot plot, 
uh, what pandas is going to do, it's going to automatically make a, make a chart based on that function. So we've chained that plot function to the value underscore count. So it already has those, uh, those numbers ready to plot. So uh, when you plot a bar chart, just make sure you grab the column name and call dot value underscore counts first and then attach dot plot. And that's how you would do it in pandas. So uh, let's plot a bar chart of the different counts of genders like last time, just to show you how it looks. So DF and then the gender column was sex and then dot value underscore counts. And then let's call dot plot and let's set the kind right to a bar graph. And then the fig size will be equal to uh, the width of 15 and 12, let's do 10. And then um, the colors, we'll just do red and green again. And then let's plot the X label. So gender, and then the Y label, let's do count. And then plt.title, we'll do frequency, Genders. And then call plt.show, right? Let's do that. So here, you know, same thing. We got the same exact plot as above, right? Just in pandas, it's a different syntax. So, you know, we can see here it shows the same result. Male, there's more males than females. Again, let's use pandas to plot the, the metals, the, uh, the bar chart about the various different kinds of metals in their counts. So what we're gonna do, right? If you remember, we're gonna access the metal column, right? And then now we wanna get the value of the counts, the various different counts in that column. So dot value underscore counts, right? So we now have that. And now let's call the dot plot function, dot plot, specify the kind of plot, which is gonna be a bar graph the fig size of 15 and eight. And let's set the color equal to, now it's gonna be an array of three colors because there's three metals. So let's do, um, I think I did yellow, um, purple, and blue. And then um, just to, you know, I can label that, but I just want to show you here. Okay, so you'd obviously label these, but same same thing here. We reproduce the same graph from above, and so that's how you plot uh, these normal uh, standard bar charts with pandas and matplotlib. But you know, we as you can see here, we have we're dealing with a very you know low number of uh, outcomes here. You know, with the with the gender column, it's male and female. With the metals, it's bronze, gold, silver. You know, it's easy to show that on this kind of bar chart. But, you know, if we have a column with very, you know, a lot of different discrete outcomes, you know, it's going to be hard to line these up along uh, this x-axis. And it may not be, uh, you know, so aesthetically pleasing to the eye if we want to look at it. So another thing you can do is you can plot horizontal bar charts. So what this is going to do is just going to flip the axis. So we're going to have the, the count or the frequency is going to be along the x-axis and the uh, different, different outcomes are going to be along the y-axis. So it's going to show the bars coming horizontally. So we can do this in matplotlib and pandas. The way we do this in matplotlib is that we call blt.barh. So bar h just stands for bar horizontal. And then we specify the same, same thing that we just did, get the categorical call name called dot unique for the x, and then the value underscore counts for the y, right? And then for the horizontal bar chart, it's the same thing that we just did, right? You call the dot value underscore counts. And then instead, only thing you have to change is just specify bar H as your, as your kind. So as the kind of plot. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's plot the uh, various different kinds of sports we had and their participants. So let's first do this in that plot web. Let's do plt.figure fig size. 15 and eight, and then let's plot the uh, bar the horizontal bar chart. So we're gonna do plt.barh, right? And then we're going to grab that sport column. So df sport, and then make sure to get the unique outcomes. 
and df sport and then the value underscore counts. Right. And so uh, that's now let's set the title. So plt.title uh, frequency of sport. The x label is so let's call the x label counts, right? Because it's going to be horizontal. So our horizontal is going to be the frequency this time. And our y label is going to be our uh, the various different sports since it's going to be horizontal. So plt.y label is sport. And then plt.show when we run this, uh, this is now going to show um, all the sports on the on the y-axis here and their various uh, frequencies and how often they occurred. And you know this this shows that um, this is the you know this is more aesthetically pleasing than if it was just vertical. Um, and you know we can look at this and observe some uh, different things. And obviously there's some complexities with Matplotlib and where you can space out the various tick marks and whatnot. This is roughly how you would plot it. Um, just a rough idea how you'd plot it in um, Matplotlib. And so now let's also do the same thing, but in pandas. So to do that, we want to grab the column name, value underscore counts, and then plot and specify the type of bar, a uh, type of graph, which is going to be a bar horizontal. So let's grab the sport column name, right? Dot um, value underscore counts dot plot. And this time the kind of bar is going to be a bar H plot bar horizontal. And then let's set the figure size to 15 and 10. And let's plot the X label, which is going to be the counts. And the Y label, which is going to be the sport. And the title, which would, which would just be frequency of sport. <clears throat> So see here, uh, we got the same exact result. Um, so this is how just how you do it in matplotlib versus pandas, same thing, and shows the relevant um, bar chart, right? So after we've explored our categorical columns, right? We, we first looked at distribution of numerical variables that allowed us to see uh, what kind of outcomes we had uh, in their distribution. We looked at box plots to look for outliers in our data. Then we explored our categorical columns with bar charts. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to visualize our relationships between our numerical variables. And uh, this is really important because a lot of common tasks such as linear regression uh, go off of visualizing these relationships. And the way we do this is with a scatter plot. And what a scatter plot does is it, if you remember it, it will plot uh, two numerical columns against each other and it tries to look for any sort of relationship um, or correlation between the two variables. And the way we can do this in matplotlib is with the plt.scatter function. So, you know, matplotlib is very easy to use for plotting. All you have to do is use that plt object and specify the type of plot, right? Um, but in this case, what you want to do is you want to, since you're plotting an x and y column against each other, you want to make sure that you plot uh, specify two column names here. So the uh, X and Y, which are the two different numerical columns since you're doing a scatter plot, and then uh, you know label the X and Y axis as you wish. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let's do plt.figure uh, and we're going to do fig size and let's do uh, 15 and 8 again. And then we're going to do plt.scatter to plot our scatter plot. So let's do plt.scatter. And we're going to plot the age versus, uh, what did I say? Age and height. So df, so in the x, let's do age. And let's do df, uh, let's do height. Right. And now let's set our title label. So title is just going to be um, age versus height, let's say, and plt.x label is just going to be um, the age, and plt.y label will be the height. 
So, um, uh, yeah, I can I can zoom in for you um, if this is better. Um, so yeah, so we've just done the scatter plot and plotted the title and plotted the x label and y label, and now let's show the plot, right? <clears throat> So now here we can see, uh, you know, there's somewhat of a, you know, we can't really say that there's a positive relationship or not. We'd have to look for correlation coefficients, but yeah, you know, this is how, this is how scatter plots work in matplotlib. It plots um, the x and the y against each other and uh, shows the various uh, points. Right. Um, let's do it one more time with the Asian weight. Right. Let's do. <clears throat> Uh, let's plot the figure size. Let's set the figure size. Let's do plt.figure. And let's do fig size is um, 15 and 8. Again, call plt.scatter and do the uh, df age. And let's do df.weight. And then set the x label to the age and let's do plt.y label uh, is going to be the weight and then plt.title is going to be age versus weight. Great and then plt.show when we plot this we'll get the you know, same thing. So here it plotted the age versus the weight. So that's how you would plot scatter plots in matplotlib. And so uh, in pandas, we can do it a similar way. Um, the way we do this is instead of uh, indexing the specific column this time, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna specify a column because before we would specify a column because we were plotting some sort of graph based on only a single column, right? But here we're gonna be plotting two variables against each other. So we want to access the data frame object as it is. So the way you would do this is you would call df.plot and then call the dot scatter function on that. And you would pass in your x and your y column names. So those are your two, you're going to plot the relationship between. And then uh, specify your figure size uh, with your width and height. So uh, the way we do this, let's, let's try this here. Let's plot the relationship between the weight and the height. Let's do uh, df.plot, right? But now we have to plot scatter plot. So let's do dot scatter. Um, X is the uh, weight. And let's see height, right? Let's do our figure size as 15 and 8, right? So now we've plotted our scatter plot here. And we can see that, okay, there seems to be a relationship between these two. And if you think about it, this you know makes intuitive sense. Generally, uh, people who are taller will weigh more, right? You know, that's not always the case. You have to do more investigative work, but this, at least this relationship here, this um, how this plot looks uh, makes some sense to us. So uh, that's that 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 that's it for today uh, with your matplotlib tutorial. Um, you know, that was, uh, that was a mouthful for sure, all these different functions. And um, I didn't want to scare you guys with all the various technicalities, but just kind of come away from this to pick one method for plotting and go with that. So if some of you liked the way pandas was for plotting, you can go ahead and use that. If you liked using matplotlib, uh, you can use that. Um, but I just want to show you the different ways. And, you know, sometimes matplotlib was easier to work with than pandas was, but um, this is just how you would plot, uh, you know, simple plots in matplotlib and uh, pandas. And um, I hope you guys learned a lot today, but this is going to be it. I think some of you had questions, so um, I'm, I'll leave the rest of the workshop for any of you guys to have any questions. But after this workshop, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me on Slack. Uh, we're going to be ending a bit early tonight, it seems. But uh, yeah, uh, that's tonight's workshop. This is going to be uh, uploaded to the YouTube channel as well and BDAA's page uh, website. And uh, the Carmen course will also have this notebook and the data set and the recording as well if you want to look at it. 
um, later on. So yeah, with that, uh, thanks for coming out guys tonight. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. If you guys have any questions here, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I know I kind of went pretty fast through this, so yeah. <clears throat>